I also want to say one or two things about what we have just heard. Um, to be able to help those who don't have anything at all doing. No business, no money, no nothing. So where do I start? And I didn't hear any question from that angle. I don't have money. I don't have any business. I don't even have somebody to borrow from. So where do I start? Number two, there are people who have had businesses year in, year out. You come back, you do not see any advancement in their business. The way they, that business has been 20 years ago, the same way it has been. I remember the, the when when we were in Enugu, there, is, there was one lady where we go to eat food. And uh, the person is so specialized in cooking this natural, I mean, um, homemade food, bitter leaf soup, egusi, and all of that. And if you got just one room, 12, 12 by 12, if you go there, if you don't go there on time, you won't have space. Sometimes you go there and sit down for two, three, 20 minutes, you are still waiting for you. Because there are so many people calling for their attention. So all the time we were in Enugu, that was the order of the day. And then we left Enugu. About 10 years later, something happened. We had to go back to Enugu. So I remember that place I wanted to eat. I remember that place. So I went, that, I went to that place. When I got there, the tables, you can't even place your hand on them, place your hand on the table because they are open, they are dirty, they are, the ground and the floor are all opened. And there are very few people. And then the quality of food has gone down. But it's the same person. There are some people who have been doing one business or the other. Five years later, the same way they have been doing the business and all of that continues. No advancement, no so no structure, no system, no nothing. So such people, anytime you ask them for money or you look for money, you will see it with their hands. How do we deal? Because that is where many of us here stay. And then those of us again who are working nine to five every day you work, you get that your salary and you how are you going to meet with all this inflation and things that are happening and then be able to do? How do you then survive at the present time? And the meager salary you are earning, you can't say you want to use it to do any investment and all of that. So how am I going to survive? Some people are earning 20,000. Some people are earning 30,000 in this. So these are the issues that we need to address. But nobody asks questions along that line. So that's where the problem is. And those of you who have, who feel comfortably, I mean comfortable, you, you are working, maybe they are paying you like uh, 500k in a month, a million naira in a month, two million in a month. Judging from what you have heard, you know you are still poor. Because when you talk about the bills, compulsory bills you are going to pay, you are going to pay school fees, you are going to pay for your rent, you are going to service your car and buy petrol at a very high price and all of that. So how are you, at the end of the day, you look for that money, it's nowhere. And so you are still struggling. See, every one of us here has opportunity. This same, that is why you are a Christian. Nobody that is born again that is a Christian is made to be poor. Have you heard me say, even if petrol is 10,000 naira a liter, I will be driving the car without filling it? Have some, nobody has ever asked me, maybe after the service, Pastor, this thing that you said, I want you to tell me the secret behind it. So you just heard it, and some people are saying, mm, "How oh dare you? I hear you." When you finish 
loving. When you finish complaining and whining, when you finish, what I said is what I said. And what I said is what I am doing. If patrol like, I'm standing here before God and man, let it be 20,000 naira per liter. I will buy it and I will feel it. I won't even notice it. Why? serving God for example and you are working with God and you are investing and all of that God expects to see results for example somebody said I just want to join um, uh, um, evangelism department and all of that and then you go out and you now whistle and then when you whistle uh, you now say um, please uh, after praying for them and all of that he said join a Bible believing church that person is a fool because God is spending, expecting you to do business at the end of the day to produce result. Because the end result of all that you are doing is that you win it, so you develop that soul. You develop it, that person. You disciple him so that he'll be able to stand on his feet and begin to do that same thing that you have done to him. That is the profit. That is the fruit. That is what God is looking for. So if you are not able to do that, you are not. that's why Jesus said, you didn't choose me, I chose you, I ordained you that you might do what? Bear fruit. So you can go and bear fruit. And your fruit will remain. That's a profit. So a lot of people are just interested in just going with So You go to one place and do, you do evangelism, do uh, um, uh, uh, medical outreach, uh, you do whatever. When you finish, you go. You are wasting. That is. Can you do that kind of a business in your own natural business? Can you do it? You can't. And that is why at the end of the day, you don't see anything. That is, you see, that is why we are doing what we are doing. I'm crying out my heart. I am doing everything. I'm investing in the people. I am interested in seeing results. I'm not interested in hypocrisy. I'm not interested in uh, in uh, in uh, stories. I, because God said, I want to conform men into the image of Jesus. Right? Because that is what he wants to see. When he sees it, he pays. But if you are just raising people who are anywhere, they Assuming that because I am thinking this way, assuming rapture or cause now, rapture or cause from what I have read in the Bible, are these people going to go to heaven? If they are not going to go to heaven, it means that I don't have anything to offer. So, 
serve God, you think you are doing somebody, anybody favor. I'm not saying that you don't, you can get your job, work in the place, do whatever, but that little time, that little time, at least you start from somewhere, that little time that you bring that you want to serve God, give him a quality service. If you're the one cleaning the church and all of that, clean it in such a way nobody will complain about it. Bring out your time. Do it knowing that you are doing it for him. He's the one that will pay you. And when God is going to pay you, if you are serving God and working for him and all of that, his economy is not dependent on whether there is inflation or no inflation. True or false? Can everybody serve God and serve God this way? Is it possible? That is why inflation or no inflation, economy or no economy will not affect you. God is able, he supplies every single aspect of your need. Because a time will come when money will fail, like it happened in Egypt. With all this thing that we are talking about, when the B system will start, all this investment and all the money and all of that, the one that you saved, they will confiscate it from you. They will take it away from you. There are a couple of people, I've called them, I say, the way, why is it that year in, year out, this your business is the same way it is? Why can't you create a system and a small, start building it? Five years later, you are still the chairman, you are still the CEO, you are the, the, the secretary, you are the, the logistic man, you are, everything is in one person. There is one that I know, all his equipment and all of that is in one bag. Five years later, he's still in that same bag, one bag. Ten years later, I've known him for about seven years. You know why? Because he makes one, he makes 10,000 naira. That 10,000 naira will go that very day. Spend everything, finish. No discipline. And where he starts, first of all, is having a vision. And sit down and plan and grow it. All these multi-billion naira businesses and dollar businesses you see today, he started from his scratch. When you serve God, just like those two young boys you, came, you called out. Because I've noticed every time I come here, I see them. Every time I come here, I see them. They are everywhere. They are cleaning. They are running. They are doing every single thing. And they are doing it with all their heart. You see such people. Even me, if I hear that they, even me, if I hear that they have a problem or have a need, I'm ready to go and borrow money elsewhere and help them. Do you know why? Because they are serving God. Well, for you that will come to church, you just come. All this thing that you are seeing, somebody paid for it, somebody worked for it, somebody did everything. You just come and sit down and then after the service, they share the grace and you go. That's no problem. You are not committed. I don't know, you see all those names you are calling. I don't know them. I'm hearing them from your mouth for the first time in my entire life. But you know what? The one that I know is this kingdom business. It pays. Anytime tea. Inflation or you know inflation. No. Even when I am old, assuming God, God, God uh, Jesus tarries, and I am 70, 80, 90, 100, by 100, I won't be able to preach it, but I would never be hungry. If not for at least my children, you see Daniela, you see Olive, you see Samuel, you see Debbie, all of them, even though they have married and been there, whatever, they will never forget their parents because we have invested the Lord in them to raise them. They won't hear that their dad is hungry. They will trouble their husbands. True or false? And the money will come. We will never be. So raise them. 
That's why your children, even if you're not with, invest in them. And the quality investment that you are going to make is spiritual investment. Because I'm not saying that this other investment is not good. They are good. But you see, time and chance will happen to them. In the day of evil, the evil day when it shows up, Jesus said, I tell you who a wise man is, is the one that built his house on the rock. So that when the wind will come, up, the flood will come, the rain will come. But if you have trained and built that man, that person on a very spiritual ground, he will withstand those storms. When those storms will come and will hit that whatever, it will stand. But this one that was not built on spiritual platform and all of that, when those storms come, what will happen? All of them will fizzle out. That's why he said the kingdom of God is standard sure. That is why he says... I will shake the heavens and the earth so that those things that are not stable will be shaken out of the way. And the only one that is stable, which is the kingdom, he said, having therefore received a kingdom that cannot be what? Moved. His only kingdom, his only investment that you can bet your life. I am not saying that you don't do all these other ones. They, they are good. You need them. But one thing that I beg to defy is that anybody that is a Christian, except you are not born again, except you are not a Christian, that you have not received life of Christ inside of you. If you are born again and your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life, you can't be a poor man. And we're not saying you can't be a poor man because you are going to prophesy and then call things that be not. No. It is based on the fact that now that you are born again, you begin to serve God. And God has made it, he has made it compulsory that you must serve him. And serve him acceptably. He will raise you, raise you up. I'm a perfect example. That's why I have the boldness to tell you that whether I, whether I, whether there is inflation increase, to be very honest with you and I lie not, I don't feel this thing that is going on. Honestly speaking, I don't feel it. It's a miss, I don't feel it. So I struggle to come down to the, the human level to be able to understand what you are going through. Sometimes I ask, so why? How? I ask myself, a petrol, a liter of petrol is, it was, um, it was Akachiko, Akachiko was tell, telling me. I was asking him, I said, okay, so this petrol, how much do they sell? He said, Reno here and all, other places around, they sell for 800. And then at the outskirts, they sell 1,000. I asked you, they sell 1,000. So I said, you can now imagine how much a liter of petrol is sold in the East. I said, in the East, it will be about 2,000 naira. In the East. It's a choice. Now, assuming you don't have money you don't know who to borrow from. You don't know. There is a provision for it in the Bible. The Bible said that he that giveth seed to who? To the sower. So he gives you the seed to sow to start that business. But you see what your problem is. When you now give them that money, they will spend it. Some of you, say people have done um, uh, skill acquisition and training and then some things were bought. Do you know why they didn't give them cash direct? But see, because if you give them cash, maybe like, for example, there are 100 people and you give them cash, each and every one of them, 99.9% .9 of them will spend that money. You will see it after one week. Okay. They now decided, we now decided to buy those goods, the material they used to start that business. Some they bought them um, uh, bobbing uh, equipment, some hairdressing equipment, and different, different kinds. Do you know what? Some of them just carried it and sold it. And uh, who do you think you are cheating? Who do you think you are cheating? No, 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 you are cheating us. 
Hey, it must be us. You are cheating. Or you are too smart. It's us. You are cheating. You are not cheating yourself. We are. You are cheating us. We are losing because you have committed two crimes. The first is that you have cheated yourself. You have shot yourself in the leg. You can't move again. Number two, you have sown a seed that is going to travel through your generation. They've given you a seed and they prayed for you. They called you after training you, give you, train you to have a skill. And then they give you some little whatever, soft loan and stuff like that to start. And you are prayed for. And then you carry that thing and went and useless it. Then tomorrow you turn around I can see everything. When they are singing, singing, I can see everything turning around. You start, you join them to be singing. I can see everything. Hey, shut up. Because it's not turning around for good. It's turning around for worse. You know, that's part of the thing that I'm going to be sharing with you in the, in the evening. We have so much. It is our attitude. It is our character. It is the way we live. That is the problem. It's not that God does not want to. God wants. He wants to take care of his people. Look at what happened in the days of Egypt. The darkness came. On one side, it was Goshen. Light. They were having light. Two, four, seven. And they were having everything they needed. Was made available. We are made available. But on the other side of Egypt, it was darkness. All sort of evil and all of that calamity was befalling them. But on this other side, that is what it means to be in God's kingdom. It doesn't matter the kind of darkness that is every. He has told you, he said, behold, darkness and gross darkness in the world. Then, for those of you who do nine to five, I've shared it before the other time I said, you know that young man that was um, serving his master, at the point, the master said, come and give an account because I've hired all the things you are doing. And then the Bible says, the servant now quickly went and called all the people that were owing his masters. The one that was owing like, for example, 100,000, he said, write 50. The one that was owing 1 million, he said, write 300. He cut down everything and all of that. And Jesus said that this, that the the king or the master commended that servant. And Jesus said that the children of this world are in their time wiser than the children of the kingdom is written in the Bible. So what happened? How? He now said, use your unrighteous mammon to buy for yourself eternal habitation so that when you leave the place of your service, they can receive you because that was what that guy did. So you know the implication, you know the application of it. Those of you who are working nine, five, every day, every month, you know you can't do business. You know you cannot do business. It will bring you out now because all your life, all you have learned is uh, work, work, work. At the end of 30 days, they pay you. You put it inside there. Learn. Now, come out. Because to come out from there and then begin to do business and all of that is very, very, very difficult. Because you don't even understand the dynamics of business to start with. Not to talk about going out and taking the challenges that are involved. So what did he expect you to do? He said, invest in the kingdom. Keep investing in the kingdom. Keep, because a lot of you, you walk. You know, a lot of, I've heard in those early days, they said, why I like Oak House Church is that um, we don't pay tight. Because you don't like giving. And I've said this several times. I'm not easy. Nobody is going. I'm not. If you're expecting me to stand here and start raising money and all of that, but nobody is going to do it. You earn money every day, every week, every month, and all of that. You swallow everything. 
and all that you can give in a whole month, maybe like 500 naira. I saw, I saw people who are paying, paying, uh, giving offering online, you know, through the whatever. I've seen 50 naira. 50 naira. I say even the, even the commission that the bank takes from the is to show you the and the, what about the, those who don't even give at all at all how do you expect to change you see yes Jesus said for we know the grace that was in Christ how he was rich for your sake he become poor that you might become rich that's settled you are no more a poor man but you have to bring works because I've told you that faith that doesn't have work is dead there is a work aspect of it. That's why you need to work out your salvation. Work it out with fear and tremble. Because if you don't work it out, it will, it will destroy you. You will be frustrated. Even though you have all sorts. Galatians 4, 1 tells us. Even though you are an heir to the throne. Everything that is the father has belongs to you. But as long as you remain a child, you can't touch it. You are nothing but a slave. A servant. So you earn money at the end of the day, they pay you 20,000 naira in a month. Do you know the offering that God takes from you? I've shown you from the Bible. The offering that God receives from you, what do you call offering? They are sacrificed. The one that has great value on it. You can end that your 20,000 naira at the end of the month. You carry that whole money. Put it inside God's coffer. You go with nothing. He's going to pain. He's going to suffer. You're going to, you are going to cry. But that is what God wants. That's why David said, I cannot give God what does not cost me. The offering that Abel gave that offering that Abel gave that was received. People said it's because he gave animal. It's not because he gave animal. The Bible says he gave the first fruit of his father. To give a first fruit of the animals over a period of time. What it means is that when this animal will give birth, he will note it. He will separate the first one. And then that one, another one grow. He will separate another one. Another one, he will separate. Another one, he will separate. Over a period of time. And those ones that are first fruit, that have been, everything that comes out of it, they are all first fruit. He's not going to touch it. So at the end of the day, he packaged all of them and he gave it to God. Quality and quantity. That's why you say if you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. All those things that you are putting, you, you are sowing in the kingdom the day that they sack you from your place of work or the day you decide to resign and all of that. There is no way God will not pick you up. He will give you another source of income. He will do it. But when everything is... Uh, you collect everything you eat. Collect everything. You say, I won't give to the church. Let them come and carry me. You think, we have, see what we have done. Uh, somebody was talking about this. Let me tell you, this building, the day I came here was, which day what, did I come here the first time? What was happening that night of, that was the first time in my life I stepped into this place. And that was the first thing I saw. That was the first time I saw all this thing and all of that. I didn't know how it came about. My wife was just telling me the story and all of that. I was just in my... So when I came, I saw every single thing here like this. So if you think you are not going to... Who are, you don't know me. Oh. Some of you who are wagging your mouth and talking and all of that, you are blind. You don't know the person you are dealing with. And I've told you, I've come a long way. If you know my history, you will be careful about what you say. I've told you that what is remaining for me to give, or what is remaining for me, I and my wife to give, is for me to take her and give her as an offering in the basket. That's what is remaining. And what is remaining for her is to carry me one day and give as an offering. Because we gave everything. 
I can get, sometimes people will give, give me money. The, the next, as the money is coming, I'm sending it immediately. If you see the amount, I, we don't even think twice. So why won't our life be blessed? That's why I tell you, no matter what happens, I will never be hungry. I will never be broke. I will never be poor. My family will never be poor. Never. In this life and in the life to come. It's not because I know all those financial things and all those. Thank God. They are good. Excellent. But beyond that, there's something you call, is it financial grace or what? something grace? You know, there's financial wisdom. Uh -huh, financial grace. That is the one. That is the one that is, I'm interested in that one. Because I know that one, that one, <laughs> that one, he pays. Some of you are sitting down and looking for what you can get. Uh, they are not paying us enough. They are not. I say no matter, even if you pay you 100,000 naira, 200,000, 500,000 naira in a month here, is don't look at it as anything. It is a service you are giving to God. It's an offering. Quality one. So you give or you don't give. The kind of thing that we have been doing, God has been doing and all of that, it, it amazes me. Oh, so tight. Some of you are in this program today. Some of you are in this retreat. One cobalt you didn't pay. How? Um, um, accommodation. Not even. Is it that you don't have up to, even if it is 1,000 naira? Is it that you don't have 1,000 naira at all? Even if it is 1,000, drop it. Let it pain you. But if you have this mentality of collecting once they finish, you, when you call me and, and be asking me to money, where do you think I get the money from? It is the same thing that God told you to do that you are not doing that I am doing. That is why I'm getting it. Because I will sit down, I will fast, and I will pray, I will study my Bible, and I will, lie, I will live according to what I have read from the Bible, and all of that. And then from there, I will minister to you, I will preach, I will teach, I will counsel, I will follow you up, I will do all of that. Even when you slap me and abuse me and insult me and all of that, I will swallow it, I will keep on doing it, because I know to whom I am doing it. I know that I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for the sake of He said, whatever you do in words and in deeds, do all as unto who? I'm not unto man. Because if I'm doing it unto you, the day you will abuse me and insult me and say all kinds of whatever, I will be angry, I will stop doing it. That is not love. Some of you, eh? some of you, some of you, not some, most of you, most of you, everybody here, you see that's your hand, Aradite. Once you close it, eh, nobody, all the people here forcing you to open this, they can't, they can't succeed because it's so strong. Anything that, eh, you, just, you just suck it. Have you entered the plane? You want to use the lavatory and then you use the lavatory, you flush it. You see the suction pressure. Boom, you suck it with force. The first time and second time I entered, I used it. I was scared. I, 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 my heart almost. I thought the, the plane was about to crash, crash, because of the pressure. That's how a lot of us are. Their hand, eh, magnet, it pulls, and once it collects it, it doesn't release, release it. If you don't give, how do you expect? You can't. Prayer will not solve the problem. Prophetic word will not solve it. Fasting is not going to solve the problem. Amen. So these classes of people, like I talked about, those of you who are doing nine to five, so what am I going to do? God has shown you what you need to do. Okay? What about those who don't have anything at all to start with? Where have nothing? You go to God and ask God to please forgive you for being very stingy. And then ask him because he say he gives seed to the sower and bread to eat and then multiply the seed soon. 
So God has given you a seed. Uh, maybe it is financial need that you want to, in order to start up a business and all of that. And when you want to start, when you are dealing with God and all of that, be very careful. Be very careful. If you want to do all this, you are stupid, whatever, and uh, smartness and so go find somewhere else, another person and do it. But when you talk about God, when you come into God's kingdom, don't do that thing. You are not smarter than God. You are not wiser than God. So, if you pray to God and God, you ask him to give you, he will give you that seed. And when he gives you, you have to know what you want to do with that seed before you go to ask him. Because, you know, we talk about faith here. We don't have, when you finish, when they finish, if you see how many people that keep coming to me, pastor, money to pay house rent, money to do this one, I want to do this one, money and all of that. I just keep, no matter what you say, no matter how you talk it, when you feel it, they, they are just waiting for you to drop the microphone. And then they corner you. Pastor, I want to see you. What is it? Money. What you need to do is get on, the, on your knees. Ask God first of all for forgiveness for all the mad things you have done and all of that. And how you have misappropriated all that he has done for you and given to you and all of that. When you have repented, you make up your mind not to lie, not to be dishonest anymore. And then you ask him, he is merciful, he is gracious, he is going to give you again. But now when he gives you, make sure. You use it because before you go to ask him, you must have found out what you wanted to do with that money. Then you ask questions, ask people who have been there before you. They will guide you, they will direct you, they will cancel you. And then from there you grow. And for those of you who have been doing one particular business year in, year out, year in, year out, and you are making the money and you can't see the money, the reason is because you are very stingy. You believe in getting, collecting and collecting and collecting every time. Build a system and structure around that your small business. There are certain amount of money that you are going to set aside. And you are going to invest it back into the business. You don't have a, a shop. You don't have a workshop. You don't have a home. You don't have any whatever. You are every egg of your whatever is inside your bag. Sit down and plan. Have a vision. Have a goal. Because without vision, the people perish. The beginning of anything is vision. What do I want and all of that? You plan first, not based on the... Don't look at the money. You do your, your plan. Plan everything. When you finish, you bring it before God. You get on your knees. Walk. You bring it before God and pray and pray and pray and pray. A time will come. God opens the door. He will link you. He will show you. He will reveal to you. He will connect you. And when he comes, you know that it is in answer to the prayer that you have prayed, that God is working, that God is the one that is at work. So you follow him. Not just to go home and all of that, believing that you, go, you just go to church. When you, you have a prayer, your, your rent is coming to an end now. Your rent, is, your, the, another rent is coming. You know where your mind has settled? Church. I meet pastor. He will give me, uh, pastor, I have a, uh, I have a, uh, Hundred thousand. I need one fifty to complete it. They don't have anything. No. You think I don't have spirit of God in me? They don't have anything. They borrow from this one. Go another. Borrow. He has calculated that if we go to pass, he will collect two hundred. He will tell him that he has a, that the rent is five hundred. I will tell him that I have three hundred. So I'm looking for two, so he can give me two. You think, uh, you, you think you are talking to a fool. You think you are talking to somebody who doesn't have the spirit of God. I don't know who you think you are talking to. If you think you are carnal and all of that, I am not. I hear from God, I have, I have a discerning heart. Because this thing, you just sit down doing nothing. And then some of you want to start a business. Uh, guess how much? Uh, you have starting business for the first time. How much do you need? Seven million. I say, if I come on, get out, get, get out away from my side. Get away from my side. Okay, but I don't have any time to talk to you. You need seven million. Have you ever seen in your entire life, 
the whole, since you were born till today, have you ever seen 100,000 naira together? That is one, 100,000. You count this money is in your hand, 100, that you have not seen. You are talking about 7 million. Because we don't just want to be honest. And you don't want to be taught. You don't want to be guarded. You don't want cancer. I've told people from this Bible that I read, they told me, I read in the Bible that says, faith, we do, we what? We walk by, we walk by what? How do we walk? Walk is W, and uh, not O, W-A-L-K. That means walk, is it not? Did he say that you run by faith? Do you jump by faith? What about flying by faith? Faith is a walk. So you take one step after the other. If you have not, he said, if you are not faithful in that which is little, the big ones cannot be given to you. You learn from one. You have not known how to manage, I better pass my neighbor. You know what I better generator? That blue one, tiger. You can't manage it. You are believing God for... Is it that you are a thief or you are a criminal? Because God will never, ever give it to you. I don't know what we think God is. Anything that God does in your life, it starts from zero and start adding one, two, three, four, five. That's how God does it. Satan, how does Satan do his own? He will fly. He will start to, you say your, the capital you need is 10 million. That's why when you serve God and serve God in the useless way, a lot of people have served God. And they got her, he said, God, nothing is coming out of it. Let me go to Satan. He go to Satan. One, if you just, one month or two months later, you become a billionaire. The guy don't blow. Quick money. That's what devil does. But God will never do it. He takes it one step. Do you know how long it took us to come to this point? You know how long? It's more than 30 years. More than 30 years, I'm my wife. More than 30 years. And we have not started, though. Amen. 